Crypto presents exciting new opportunities for the investment-minded, but it's also volatile and accelerating in complexity. That's why we created Token Metrics, an intelligent crypto platform backed by an industry-leading combination of data, AI, and media that feeds optimized portfolios to crypto investors. Featuring Token Metrics ratings to help you find the best investment opportunities in real time, an indices page that showcases various model portfolios and deep insights into price predictions and technical analysis, a dedicated NFT dashboard that evaluates NFT collections and assets by our machine learning algorithm to find the most profitable and secure NFTs across all available blockchains. Plus, with access to Token Metrics TV, monitor 24-7 exclusive crypto news and analysis. Whether you're a first-time trader or a seasoned crypto investor, you can stay informed and in control, backed by your all-in-one crypto companion, Token Metrics. Take control of crypto today at Token Metrics. Bill, we can't hear you. We can't hear you. Your audio is off. Okay, how about now? Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, we can hear you now. You can go ahead. You can hear me now. <laughs> Okay. Welcome, everybody. Hi, this is the Market Update. I'm your host, Jim Cramer. No, I'm sorry. I'm Bill Noble. I did have a Jim Cramer moment on my Twitter uh, a while back. If you need information, <laughs> if, if you need a roadmap in crypto, become a Token Metrics customer or stay tuned to this YouTube channel for what is undoubtedly going to be a lot of updates. So first, I couldn't do content because the market wasn't volatile enough. Now we can't do content because the market is too volatile. <laughs> All right, let's welcome who's on the stream. Bullshit aside, I am gonna offer guidance today. So Bull Runner is here as usual, sir, welcome. Ethan is so cool is here, CB Aiken, with the notorious love, G Money from California, Fernando, let's go. Richard, welcome. <laughs> Whales are fishing, eh, could be. Jerry, wonder what I'm going to talk about today. Me too. Freedom Cat is here. Bill, FTX insolvent. Who would have thought? Well, again, FTX is not the Fed, right? Celsius went under. FTX took down Celsius and their bad positions, or some of it anyway. But FTX is not a central bank. They can't print money. So the bad positions are just being passed around. Now CZ has them. We'll figure it out. Okay, Ashton, I've got the sound turned back on. East Tennessee is here. Okay, hopefully the sound is back. Rugby Performance Lab, new crypto guy. Say I, Coker. We have sound, please. Engine room, get the sound on. The sound is on. Lip reading needed. Hopefully no rip leading. No. No lip reading. Don't worry, it's going to get worse. We're not sleeping tonight with this election and this crypto debacle. Okay, thanks from East Tennessee, Willameter on Super Chat. We appreciate that. Belgium is in the house. Welcome to our friends in Europe. Okay, Slacky wants more war stories. We can maybe do some of that. Chris Wayne, Bill for President. Actually, I do have an election story. I do. Uh, Atlanta is in the house. Cardano is vaporware reevaluating. Well, we'll look at Cardano. We'll look at it. All right, Nick, greetings from the UK. All right, Broken Noodle says, I'm speechless. 
You're not the only one, but I'm the TV show host, so I can't make an excuse. All right. Let's talk about what no one's talking about. Let's try that. Okay. So everyone is talking about Binance offers to buy FTX's non-US operations to fix liquidity crunch. Okay. So it's not really clear to me whether CZ is taking down all of FTX or, or part of it. What I do know is I did see CZ uh, on Zoom at Consensus, where he made fun of all the crypto firms sponsoring Formula One racing teams and advertising on Major League Baseball. So CZ is kind of having like a Warren Buffett moment as everyone heaves. CZ just comes in and hoovers up their whole business model. All right Now that's interesting, but FTX's bad positions are now Binance's bad positions or Binance's, I'm sorry, Alameda's bad positions. We don't know where that is, right? CZ is keeping the FTX exchange open, but we don't know if there's Alameda positions that have to get liquidated. Like maybe CZ is like, well, as long as the exchange mechanisms function, who cares? We'll just sell the altcoins down to zero. I don't know. This says nothing about what Bitcoin miners are going to do. Uh, I'm going to tell you what I think is important, right? Honestly. So, okay. So here's CZ. FTS asked for our help. I doubt it was that simple. It was more like snot bubble crying and begging. Now, that's what's all over the news. And what's all over the news is never the news. Our job is to give you the news before the news. This is the betting market and predicted for the New York governor's race. New York is a very liberal or blue state in America. And by the way, the U.S. election is today. Now, already we've heard all kinds of rumors that states with blue or left-wing governors have invoked cybersecurity protocols and as a patriotic American, I'm embarrassed, but not surprised to say that we can't count votes. We can do nation building. We can liberate Europe in the 40s, but we cannot count votes. And I have been saying, especially with the lunar eclipse that just happened, that something weird is going to happen in the United States. And you need to buy gold, which, by the way, is up today. Now, as far as crypto goes... The question is, will Satoshi's vision be realized? So let's just go to the charts, right? So this is an 89-minute chart. So when you have a fast-moving situation like this, uh, only an 89-minute chart is going to give you anything meaningful, I think. Now, of course, by the time you watch this tonight, 89-minute charts will have changed. But let's look at what we're looking for. So this is a 50-bar moving average. Okay. Okay. Somebody is saying smash the like button. I would appreciate that. Okay. I would love to break our record of, I think we got a thousand likes once. I wanted to get to 2000, but who knows? Maybe if gold goes to 2000 tonight, we'll get, we'll get the likes. Okay. So this is the 50 period moving average. So it's 50, 89 minute bars. ETH gets there and fails. So people are selling rallies, right? Bitcoin, same thing, right? I think the Bitcoin selling is the Bitcoin miners, right? And everyone always sells the first rally when you have massive insolvency. Again, it's not about whether you can withdraw money from exchanges. It's whether or not the bad positions are going to get liquidated at the market, right? CZ wants liquidity for the system. Does he want liquidity for the system because he's an altruistic loving guy or does he want liquidity for the system because he can buy assets or buy companies, liquidate their sludge inventory, crush the market and then come in with his own money and hoover up everything at, at 18 K Bitcoin or whatever. Or maybe he did that this morning. I don't know, but you know, this whole thing, everyone was like, Oh, FTX saves crypto two months, three months later, BitBoy's trashing the FTX, CEO for lobbying for more control of crypto. And then he blows up shortly there. This can only happen in crypto. 
I mean, there's men behaving badly at Wall Street, but this takes years. In crypto, they do it in like months or weeks. So right now, as of this conversation at midday on election day or FTX Binance debacle day, people are selling rallies. Okay. Can you blame them? No, I can't. Because when you have no visibility on a situation, right, it becomes another Celsius. Everyone says everything is all right, and it may not be. Now, that said, that said, the token metrics market indicator is bullish. Now, I know when this is wrong and you get a failed rally, there can be bad consequences like over here. Let's go to dark mode. Okay. So there was a bullish signal in March, and then it went bearish in April. And that's when I knew that it was going to be sell in May and go away, that you should GTFO. Doesn't mean it's a computer model. It follows its model. It follows beware the failed rally, just like its human counterpart. Okay. So here's a bullish signal. And frequently, after you get a bullish signal, if it's going to work, you'll get a dip. And then it'll go. So. If Binance and FTX is a distraction, right, from what's really going to happen, which is social disorder, a U.S. election that they can't even process, and a dollar collapse, right? I know. I promised my producer I would stop wailing on the dollar. I can't help it. I'm going to have to make it up to him some other way. <laughs> this, like, giant triangle in the dollar, I just it's just going to collapse, right? We're a divided society that can't process an election that owes $31 trillion. And we have a central bank that is so intent on raising rates, they're going to make it impossible for us to pay our debt. This is the same guys who thought inflation was transitory. So everyone's like, hey, what's up with FTX and Binance? Well, the bad positions are going from SAM to CZ. Now, is CZ going to sell it all? Is everybody going to panic? Are the Bitcoin miners going to panic? You know what? The answer is probably. The question remains, is anybody going to be down there to take it from them? Again, this is a question no one is asking. Like, oh, you know, okay. Shit coins are going to get sold, right? Like if Solana is on FTX's books and that Solana is on Alameda's books, it's going to get sold. If it gets transferred over to CZ, he's not going to go, oh, well, I did this because I want to speculate in Solana. No, that's not what he did. He, he, he's doing it to take out his competition. So let's just take a look at Solana because rumor has it that that's what FTX was selling in order to shore up its reserves. So let's just see what's going on in Solana. Let's try that. If you're confused, my job is to help you not be confused. Okay, so this is Solana on a daily chart. Uh, these are squat bars. They're blue bars in the Bill Williams system. Sometimes they can occur when there's a breakaway happening. Sometimes they can come within two or three candles of the bottom. Okay, let me see if I can expand this and try to find an example of where these occurred in the last debacle. So we really didn't see anything like this last time. Okay, so I'm not sure exactly what this means, but what I do know is there was an absolutely grotesque failure in Solana at the 50-day moving average, which is the yellow line. So this does fit with our theme that your altcoin may not make it. Certainly, we hope Solana does, but it doesn't have to. What may wind up happening, again, assuming Bitcoin miners don't wreck everything, which, you know, again, they're not the only players out there. Meaning FTX and CZ, everyone's like, Hyper focused on that. Okay, CZ saved everybody. No, CZ bought a competitor at a cheap price. People with bad positions and who need to tax law sell still have bad positions. Okay. Now, if that's the case, right? If it if let's go to 89 minute on Bitcoin. If Bitcoin is going to keep it together, okay. I think this level right here has to hold. I think it's 18,800. Right? They couldn't get down there the first time, and everybody sold the first uptick. So 
I want to give you a framework. So if you're watching this tonight or tomorrow morning, I want the framework I give you today to still be good. The first question is, the CZ takeover of FTX or part of FTX, does that stop the selling in bad positions? That's the first thing. The second thing is, is a question. Is everybody selling because there's something wrong with crypto? Or is everybody selling because they're so scarred by what happened in July that they're dumping crypto, but they're not thinking about now with the election is the dawn of crypto, right? Is it the ghost of Celsius or is it the ghost of Celsius fake out? In other words, would you have bought Bitcoin this morning? Like I put get to the chopper on my Twitter and I left it there. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. People can go on my Twitter and curse me off. That's how bad it looked. Yesterday on the market update, I'm like, you know what? Let's stick with Bitcoin and gold. Even though there are some things in Bitcoin that are scary, let's stick with Bitcoin and gold. And then it was like, get to the chopper. Even I didn't like it. I was like, oh my God, I'm scared. As my Kramer moment. I'm like, F, I just sold the low. I told you this happens, right? Anybody who's watched the market update for any period of time knows that, you know, you will buy the high and you will sell the low sometimes all in the same day. And I may have done that, but that's okay because now it's time for the next trade. It's time to move beyond what everyone else is thinking. So let's take a look at stocks. All right. Stocks are rising. And this is an 89-minute chart, okay? It's not surprising that stocks are rising because stocks always have positive imagination, all right? Let's see, let's see if there's any hidden pivot work that would indicate that stocks might stop here. No, there isn't. Let's try something else. Okay. So I did find the hidden pivot structure that hints that this is a huge inflection point, inflection point for stocks. Okay. So this gives you part two of the plan. Right? Everybody is assuming right now, I believe, that the Republicans or the right wing in the United States are going to do better uh, in this New York governor's race uh, in the prediction market. I think we have people buying the chances that this Republican does good. Who knows if that's true or not? Uh, the United States has been known for both election surprises and the ability to 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 and the inability to count votes. So I think if you have S and P above thirty eight fifty eight when you're watching this, that will tell you whether or not stocks believe a business friendly environment is coming to the United States legislature. Of course, what happens in stocks will also reflect whether or not the United States can count the votes to begin with, which I think is a very big assumption. Okay. Interestingly, bonds are moving higher. Interest rates are falling. Okay. Matter of fact, this is a very amazing looking reversal in long bond futures. Like this is a bullish engulfing pattern if it holds. Now, <laughs> why do people buy bonds? Just throwing it out there. Well, they buy bonds because they're afraid something bad's going to happen. That's one reason. Maybe people are buying bonds because the Republicans are going to take power. Power and Jerome Powell's getting fired. Again, who's talking about that? Nobody, which is why it's time to talk about it. Okay. If you have inflation and the Fed has to get off hawk tard because of social disorder, okay, when everyone is focused on CZ and crypto personalities, the legacy developments off the election could be extremely meaningful. Junior gold mining stocks, which everybody just rolls their eyes, I keep talking about it, just indiscriminately mooning, mooning. And I'm never going to shut up about it. Breaking out of a head and shoulders bottom formation. Why is everybody selling Bitcoin when gold is breaking out? 
I mean, maybe miners have to sell. You know, maybe there are bad positions out there. there well, it's, there's no maybe. There are bad positions. So if you're watching this tonight and Bitcoin did 17K, you know that the people with bad positions sold. And to state the obvious, no one was there to take it from. Them. Right? No, is if, if crypto collapses, it's because there's nothing but bad positions out there and no buyers, which could be the case in small altcoins. You never know. Right? But is it true in Bitcoin and Ethereum? Is it? So we know the gold thesis seems okay. ETH is all over the place, right? Um, the smart people that I'm talking to are looking probably somewhere near the 50-day moving average in ETH at 1400 And just a reminder, if you were selling Ethereum this morning at the low of 1424 again, not to be a jerk. But you were selling Ethereum on top of the 2017 high. It is amazing to me and always has been that people just, they can't stop selling Ethereum on support. Now, yes, there are bad positions out there. Yes, I'm not an idiot. I understand that. You could have another liquidation cycle. It could be get to the chopper. But is that is that a shock? Like, no one believed it was a calamity in July. Now everyone thinks it's a calamity. It just makes me want to go the other way. It does. It, I probably shouldn't because, you know, if Bitcoin miners have to sell, it's bad. And I think the thing you want to see, it isn't how the market reacts to the first headline. Because what do I always say? The first headline is always wrong. The first move is always wrong on any of these events. So first it was down was wrong because CZ came in and bought it. Then it was up. And now we're going to move on to the election. Okay. Because whatever bad positions there are in crypto, they're still out there. And I'm more afraid of what Bitcoin miners are going to do than I am of what is going on with Alameda Research. Right, I'm more concerned about stuff like this. You know, in other words, when somebody is guaranteed to win, is there an upset? And if there is an upset, does anybody accept that? Like, that's the key. That's the key. Now, as a point of information, okay, okay, Manolo, Manolo says, thanks for going live, no problem. Okay, Ben Frost, Ben Forst says crypto is a ripoff. Okay. Somebody said FTX FUD is is why is why we're selling off. And 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 West says I'm glad FTX does not have Cardano. And somebody is expressing support for a prior president. Okay. I think I just had a Kramer moment, maybe too. Because yesterday I liked Bitcoin and it crashed. Then I was like, oh my God. And then it went up. Two Kramer moments in two days. It happens to everybody. When you got to talk on TV, it's going to happen. Not making excuses. If it happened to you, forget it. Don't worry about it. Right? Now look, here is another way to look at the plan. If crypto is going to crash, let it. Right. Remember when I said I wanted to buy breakouts and not catch the falling knife? This is why. Didn't know it was going to be FTX, but I don't think there's a need to catch the falling knife. You want to buy a breakout. You want to buy it when the market goes, oh, gee, why was I worried about that? Or what you want to do is let them liquidate the bad positions. Like as an election comes in, there's going to be all this liquidity and all this trading. Right, U.S. holidays are coming up, so whoever's going to buy, whoever's going to sell, they're going to do it now. Right, they're going to do it now, and maybe that's what CZ is going to do. He's going to go into the market. And he's going to say, "Okay, all this bad shit that they have, I'm just going to sell it. I'm going to sell it. I'm going to get the collateral. I'm going to take their operations, and that may mean I get to Hoover up a bunch of Bitcoin at whatever price." Okay, 
So bad positions are still out there. Don't, don't kid yourself. But the reason for crypto in general may be about to emerge. And this is classic in market, in history, right? Warren Buffett wouldn't touch the Google IPO. Nobody would touch Amazon at the low in 2002. People who made tons of money in internet stock IPOs in 2000, 2002, hopefully they saved their money because they couldn't get jobs for two years because people were like, oh my God, you did internet stocks? I can't hire you. No shit. Like internet stocks were like, oh my God, it's the greatest thing ever. And then it was, oh my God, I can't even talk to you. Wall Street war stories. There's another Wall Street war stories. I'm colossally down on my luck colossally. I, and I needed a job and the job I, I, I applied for, I was overqualified and they were going to disqualify me because I was overqualified. But that was the, the interview was the night that there was an upset in the U S election. I won't name names because of, of, uh, the algorithm, but there was an upset and the markets went wild. And they looked at me and go, and they went, well, you're overqualified, but you have the right license. So you're in. And ironically, that job kept me alive so I could get to crypto. So I'm familiar with election day insanity. Now, back then, ironically, the person who was elected, it was assumed that it was financial market Armageddon because it was somehow going to disrupt QE and the sugar that was flowing into markets which turned out to be colossally incorrect. The thinking at the time of that election was that the market wasn't going to move. The market was just going to sit there. And then the assumption was the person who got elected was bad for the markets. And then it turns out the market did nothing but go up for three years. Nothing but go up, straight up. And everybody that night sold the law. They sold the low. They, they sold a multi-year low that night because the market wasn't going to not move and QE would continue and then positive fiscal developments followed along with a very business-friendly environment. So everything that everybody was saying in the heat of the moment, wrong. So... FTX has a problem with their solvency. Is that good or bad? It's probably bad. Is CZ going to liquidate their crypto at the market? Probably. Probably. So whatever sludge they own is probably going to get sold into the market. Now, when the market goes down, if it goes down again, the question is, who's going to be down there to buy it? Because wouldn't it be funny if everybody spent all day selling crypto and then they woke up in the morning and no one knew who was in charge of the United States. I missed that last question. Somebody said, can you talk for hours, please? This is great. Okay. Yeah, I can, I can talk for as long as I can talk. Okay. In other words, what happens in the heat of the moment is never the right trade. Like the guys who can just sit back and say, all right, we're just going to let them sell it. If people think this is the repeat of Celsius, Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. The thing that made Celsius and that whole sell in May and go away debacle a debacle is because no one believed it. Now everyone looks at FTX and Binance and goes, oh my God, it's terrible. It's wonderful. They're not focusing on the right thing. Yeah, I mean, a bunch of altcoins could get smashed here, but we know that already. I mean, that's what we've been saying on the show. I mean, that part I got right, right? It's like, you know... <laughs> It's not beware the failed rally. It's beware no rally in tax loss selling season. Got that right. Gold is looking good. Okay. Bitcoin, I'm all over the place on, right? I loved it at 20,700. I was like scared out of my mind at 19,000 and change. And right now I'm looking at it all down 4%. I'm like, oh my God, it's going to break the 50 day moving average. The thing is, the first move is always wrong. So the down move was wrong. The up move was wrong. 
And I think the biggest question in crypto is, will somebody big take down all this risk? Or will this be another failed rally? So let's look at ETH, right? Now, if you want to, if you want to talk the Celsius talk, I think this is how you do it, right? And we, we've discussed this, okay? It, it's your classic beware the failed rally, okay? So let's, let's just like go back to basics for just a second, right? Cause this will be relevant tonight. It was relevant yesterday. Kind of, I wish I had paid more attention to it when I talked about it. So there was a failed rally in ETH on the 29th of October, right? A Saturday classic weekend top then on friday november 4th eth did another one of these tops same thing happened in celsius right they squeezed the shorts out the shorts came back in the shorts got squeezed out and then the whole thing just got dropped that's how the last decline started so if you're super bearish and you want to sell every uptick because some guys do they think ETH's going to a thousand okay Respect for other people's point of view at this point to me has never been more important. Like if you know a guy who's really smart, and I know a couple of guys who think it's going to a thousand. Okay. Right. In other words, it's, they've got the parallel between now and April on their side. They've also got this idea of tax law selling. Micro strategy is down 12%, right? Crypto related equities are getting killed. I understand that. Like I, even, even my Bitcoin miner that I like hut is getting smashed. Let me see if it's below the 50 day moving average or not. It is it sucks. Okay. Okay. Not good. They're killing crypto stocks today because they're afraid liquidation is in the market and it's not unfounded. It's not unfounded. Okay, let's take a look at total. Okay, so let's take a look at total on a weekly chart. Okay, so this is, let me check to see what moving average this is. Okay, so it's a 50-day moving average. So this is total on a daily chart. It's total crypto market cap. And the big question is, is the 50-day moving average going to hold? Not only that, but there's a point to uh, bring out here. So let me ask you something. Just, just like a, a trading 101 type thing. Does this market look good to you right now? They seriously, just, just like, oh yeah, I definitely want to buy this. Eats down 7% and everyone's going to like, everyone's going to like giant players are going to like liquidate in my face. Does it look good? Not really. Does it look scary? Oh yeah. Is there an election tonight? Is there a total uncertainty? Absolutely. So who in their right mind would buy crypto right now? No one. No one. No one would buy crypto right now. Which to me makes it more interesting. No one would buy crypto right now. No one in their right mind. And I'm the sell in May and go away guy. I was the guy who was like one debacle leads to another debacle, which again, I could be having a Kramer moment and it's possible. Wouldn't it be funny if we woke up in the morning and realized why we're in crypto to begin with? Why are we in crypto to begin with? And the emotions of the moment, I mean, dude, we got, we got two things going on at the same time. You've got bad positions that have to get liquidated. And you've got an election that are going to like expose the United States. They're going to expose the United States. I mean, massive layoffs are happening in our biggest companies. The Federal Reserve thinks that people who get laid off from big companies can come down and work at fast food restaurants, and that's somehow going to fix the problem in the labor market. It's not going to fix anything. Nobody can go to work for $10 an hour and pay their rent. So those jobs are not going to get filled. They're not. You're just going to lose jobs, and prices are still going to stay high. Now, how does this affect crypto? Well, will crypto benefit from a lower dollar? Will you walk in tomorrow and will a dollar be down 4%? Who's talking about that? Nobody. What, what are people going to say? 
oh, gee, let's talk about the problems in Europe because we haven't talked enough about the problems in Europe. No one is talking about the problems in the United States. So, and no one's talking about legacy. Everyone's like, oh my God, I got to understand macro. Oh, wait, FTX is, is getting liquidated. Oh, let's forget macro. Let's go back to that. Their positions are going to get liquidated, right? And that's probably going to go on all day today. And why not? I mean, again, it's max fear. It's max uncertainty. It's not max fear. It's max uncertainty. It's like, I don't know where the bad positions are. I don't know if CZ is going to liquidate everything at the market. I don't know if that's a component of his agreement with FTX, right? That's the thing we don't know. CZ is like, yeah, we're taking it over in terms to be described later. So CZ is probably going to buy FTX for nothing the way FTX bought certain other players for nothing. So we're going to buy nothing. We're going to pay nothing. And then we're going to sell all your collateral sludge at a loss at the market. So we're going to take the losses on your crypto and buy you for nothing. So the only thing that'll cost us is whatever we lose selling your assets. So forced selling is here. Okay. When forced selling ends, you can have levitation back up or forced selling can send ETH to a thousand. So if you're watching this later, you know who's going to win. Now, I would love to tell you who's going to win. I would love to. I would be a genius. But I just had two Kramer moments. I don't really want to have three and four. What I do know is, is that people are selling crypto. If somebody takes it from them tonight, it's going up. Now, if ETH closes below 1400 and stays below 1400 after this election, then crypto's got a much bigger problem. Right. So let's go to let's go to uh, total two. Okay. Again, the fifty day moving average. Actually, let's let's try something different. Sometimes in currencies, the fifty five day moving average. And actually, let's let's even just play around even more. Okay. I know token metrics is into the sixty day exponential moving average. So let's do a little live TA. So moving average exponential, I just chose. And then I went to the 60 day. Okay. I'm going to make this so you can see it better. Okay. So here's the bad news, right? Total two is below the 60 day exponential moving average. Okay. So it's holding on the 50, but our quantitative moving average, it's not doing well. Let's see what total is doing. Same thing. It's breaking back below. So crypto has more work to do based on these metrics. Like look at Bitcoin. Jesus. Okay. 60 day exponential moving average Bitcoin cracking. Now this brings us to a new topic. Okay. Let's go to like, let's say a daily chart. What happens if crypto gets wasted, right? Like what happens if you're watching this video later and crypto is just like getting annihilated? Where are the buy points? Where are the buy points? Like if crypto gets killed off the election or, or whatever, okay? I would say the big support point in Bitcoin would be 16,700. Looks like we have a lot of people on the stream today. Welcome. Welcome to Token Metrics, the research shop that's not afraid to go live and talk about the market when no one knows anything about what's going to happen with the market. That's what we're famous for. So sign up on tokenmetrics.com, hit the like button, subscribe. And again, we thank you and all of our customers for supporting us. Now, if Bitcoin gets annihilated, 16.7K is support. Like if Bitcoin's going to get hoovered up, that's where it's going to get hoovered up. Let's look at ETH and try to figure out, I don't know, let's use the four-hour chart to try to find where support might be in ETH. Assuming it's a debacle. Okay, so if it's a debacle in ETH and they somehow figure out a reason 
to sell it below the 2017 high, which I just can't believe. But, you know, this is not about what I believe. This is about what's on the chart. So I would say that from hidden pivot analysis, the key level is 1329. I would be really, really happy if 1450 held. I would really make this structure kind of break. But, you know, if this is the four hour chart of ETH. So I think maybe what we can do is, is, you know, I'm just kind of going with it here, is maybe the best thing we can do for the crowd is to say, all right, let's just go through some examples and say, all right, if the world ended here, right, let's go to 89 minute. If there was, you know, if this thing just got smashed, what would happen? So this is optimism. This is OP. Okay. So if optimism crashed, 96 cents might be interesting. Because this is it. This is a good exercise, right? In other words, if everybody tonight goes, all right, well, I'm selling. Remember, just like that other, that other election I was telling you about. What if everybody goes, oh my God, I have to get out because I don't know what's going to happen with the election and I know bad positions are getting liquidated and I did a short on tax loss selling because I'm so offside today. I did a short about this is the season for tax loss selling. Meaning if you have an altcoin that didn't work out, sell it. Take the not investment advice, not tax advice, but if you have investments that don't work out, this is the time of the year when people unload to collect the tax loss so they can write it off against their gains. Oh, wait, is that gold mooning? Oops. <laughs> up 2%. Silver up 3%. Can't stop loving it. Can't stop loving it. 89 minutes silver. Four-hour chart, upside target, $22. Boring, yes. You're making more money in gold than you are in stonks and crypto. Like, where's PAX? I've been talking about this for a while. Everyone's tuned me out. I guess I don't blame you. <laughs> I was like, ah, eh, Bill, PAX is boring. Yeah, well, okay. It's boring, but it may be profitable. Let's see if, if PAX is at resistance. Like, PAX is just blowing through anything that looks like resistance right now. Let me just put this up here. So maybe I can try to get an upside target idea. I don't know. Upside target for packs, probably 1722. Okay. If everybody's intent on selling crypto, hey, let's find some support points. Let's find some support points together. That's why token metrics in this live stream is so good. Because we try to help you no matter what. Okay, let's let's go to Avalanche. So if everyone sells Avalanche, <clears throat> all right. So if Avalanche breaks fifteen, wow. Let's try four hour on this. No, well, let's leave it. So. Here's a way to look at this. If Avalanche gets below 16, where would you buy it? Like if they offered you bargain basement crypto prices, I, I'm showing nine. Maybe that's just too much to ask for, right? <laughs> okay, but if they killed it, let me just label this correctly, four hours, you know, you can mark it and our guys will timestamp this later. Okay, let's go to Solana. That's like at the epicenter of this. So Solana down 15%, big favorite of FTX. And as you can see, it's just getting liquidated like with impunity, right? So just because CZ bought FTX, doesn't mean that FTX's bad positions are going away. CZ's just taking over so there can be liquidity. So people can sell, right? They can sell and get their money out 
And CZ is probably only too happy to accommodate them. So again, we're talking about the crypto vision. What price do you want to pay for the crypto vision? Maybe it's Solana at 18. Okay, like using the hidden pivot analysis on the Solana 89 minute chart. Now, I guess if you're watching this and Solana is below 80, 18, well, then I guess it's a shit show and we'll have to do a new stream. But I'm almost inclined to think that, all right, you know, you're either tax loss selling Solana or if you've got any dry powder and they just kill this thing, maybe 18 is an important level. Let me just see. Let me just check to see if that's going to be a new low. It will be. So Solana is already making a new low for this year, I think. Yeah. So Solana is making a huge new low. Okay. And if it pukes all the way down to 18, is it going down to 18 because people are giving up on it? Or is it going down to 18 because some venture capital firm screwed up on its positions. 25 is a key level. So if Solana is above 25, then you probably won't see 18. But if there is a total panic, 18 is a buy level. Okay, let's go back to ETH. God, I can't believe Zcash is down 10%. That just, it just kills me. Okay. So ETH did make a new low. Okay, so again, in Ethereum, I'm looking at 1332. All right, so we want to pause our broadcast here for a brief commercial interruption, not a commercial interruption, a brief commercial from Token Metrics to let everybody know that Token Metrics is now available in a multilingual format or will be in the next 48 hours. So if you need, if you need token metrics in different languages to be able to figure out what the next big altcoins are or where the big support points are, I haven't even gotten into because there's so much volatility where the best AI driven support points are for certain coins using token metrics. FTX will ever run out of money. Today is a big day in crypto. This space always amazes me. That comes from our guy who's like as plugged in as plugged in can get. Seriously. Like, you know, you're, you're living crypto history. Okay. And if everybody's positions are going to get puked, it would be fitting if Satoshi's vision was fulfilled at the moment of bear market hysteria. Either that or it's just a total crash, which is possible. All right. Speaking of total crash, let's just go over here to ETH on token metrics. And let's check out this doing live TA. Okay. Hopefully this comes up, right? So we're going to do TA on ETH using the token metrics automated quant support resistance levels. No, TA. So here we are. We're on ETH. We're going to click the max setting. You got to give it a minute to think. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go through this whole history of ETH. And we're going to look at levels gone way back and see if we can find if there's a total debacle where ETH might stop. So 1450 is a key level. ETH is probably there right now. So this is AI reading the chart, not me. 1350 is the level. 1208 was a really big deal if it goes down there. Now, a lot of people think you're going to see a 1,000. That there's a print 
over here. I think that the smart guys I know are looking at this print over here at like a thousand. These like single wicks, and they think that they're going to get tested. That's what the bearish crowd thinks. Okay, that's what they think. And they've got the failed rally and all kinds of stuff on their side. Okay, let's just look at Solana. That's crashing, right? Now, I got to be honest with you. Obviously, I work at the company. So, but in times like this, it's not a shill. It's like if this market does something and like crypto is like 15, 20% in either direction, the election results aren't even in yet. And crypto is 10% in either direction. Yesterday, I was crying like a you-know-what going, oh, my God, what am I going to say on the air? I can't do the market update because there's no volatility. That is so much volatility. I think I'm going to be doing the market update four times a day, which hopefully you guys are okay with. And make sure you tune in, subscribe, and hit the like button because the more you help us, the more we can help you. Okay, so Solana, if Solana is in apocalypse mode, <clears throat> okay, it doesn't appear that there's a lot of support in Solana, right? Let me just figure this out. There doesn't appear to be a lot of support in Solana below 29. You could be looking at 18. Is that what, is that what we said? I'm in a senior moment. But if we're looking at Solana, yeah, we, we were talking about 18. So there's 18 on hidden pivot analysis and there's 18 in Solana on token metrics, which is why you use token metrics. Okay. Let's take a moment to review what we've learned today. Right now, 76% of the people in a blue state think the blue person's going to win. And 25% of the people think the red person will win. If we're having a day where everybody, everybody is wrong about everything, right? Then big crypto funds will liquidate. Bitcoin miners might liquidate. And you might be looking at crypto prices on the day the dollar crashes. Like, have you ever asked yourself, what price will I be able to buy crypto on the day the dollar crashes? And if I told you that the day the dollar crashes, people would be falling all over themselves to sell crypto for good reason, right? People just got to liquidate for selling. It's like, oh my God, I got to get out. There's an election. I think if I was sitting on a trading desk and I had all these positions and I was like, Bill, do you want to like liquidate this sludge or do you want to bet on the election? And the positions were bad and we were in a forced liquidation mode. In that seat, I would probably be like, I can't hold it. There's too much risk. I got to get rid of it. Right. But that can create opportunity, right? From great pain comes great opportunity. Now, obviously there's people out there who are long crypto who are probably miserable, which is why they're tuning in. So our hearts go out to you if you are miserable, but if you've got dry powder and they trash this thing, wouldn't it be funny if you got to buy Bitcoin below 17K the night the dollar fell apart? Because if we wake up tomorrow or the next day or the next day after that, and we don't know who's in charge of the legislature of the United States of America, what do you think is going to happen in these markets? What do you think is going to happen? Right? You're going to have social disorder. You may have social disorder anyway. I think the American media, because it leans blue, has possibly underreported how angry the U.S. voter is and how much they could take that out on the people currently in power. Or at least that's the talk. No one knows whether that's the case or not. It's probably the case that if there is an upset or a sweep the other way, that it's been underreported and not priced in. Again, going back to New York, it's 75-25 in favor of blue in the bluest of blue states. I get it. But if you're listening to this three hours from now and you go back to my story about the last election or you go back to any of these stories where, you know, nobody would touch the Google IPO. 
Warren Buffett would not touch the Google IPO. CZ is probably like, oh, I'll, I'll take your busted up company and I'll sell everything at the market. And then I'll be standing down there when everyone's liquidating and panicking at 16,000. You know, he told you at consensus, I didn't, I didn't buy baseball teams. I didn't sponsor major league sports. Now you know why. So he's got enough money to scoop up everybody when they're panicking. So ETH is already down 11% as we're talking. So first everything was awful. Then everything was great. And then we've got beware the failed rally. So let's end it with ETH. Okay. So ETH is headed for support at 1332. The meltdown is on. Okay. If ETH doesn't hold 1332, we're going to have to do a new live stream. But it looks like panic is happening in crypto. Right. Everybody is selling at the exact moment that crypto could turn. So if crypto is a debacle, let's revert back to the advice that I actually got right, which is don't catch the falling knife. Like wait and let this thing prove to you that say a support point holds or that it's actually going to turn around and go up. Because if you bought the dip two days ago, you would have gotten destroyed. Right? Let it go down, let it hit support and then see who's there to take it. Wait for something. Don't, don't, everyone says, oh, I'm going to wait for confirmation. You want to wait for something that says your theory or your framework is correct. Like right now, everyone's panicking. Let them. Okay. So that's the market update. Let me see what we got. RGC 3000 says the great decoupling laugh out loud. Yeah, I know. It's funny. The great decoupling is legacy up crypto down. Sick. Right. Let's see what gold is doing. Is gold holding a bid or is gold cracking? Gold is still doing okay, according to the 89 minute chart. Gold stocks have stopped going up. And of course, because gold is up today, the gold Bitcoin ratio is exploding, right? It's the ratio between gold and Bitcoin. And I keep talking about this. I don't keep talking. I talk about it every once in a while. Like gold is mispriced relative to Bitcoin, right? And I don't think it means Bitcoin has to go down, although it looks like miners are going to puke it all out. But if you get an epic crash, it may be time to consider both. But look how much gold, how much room gold has to gold over Bitcoin. Gold could go up more than Bitcoin could if it turns around. Is that insane? Yes. Okay. I teach dirt stuff. Just subscribed for the first time. Friend, we appreciate that. Subscribe to this channel. We're going to get research during a debacle right here. Now, last time I had it perfectly. This time I had it. Eh, I had gold. I had a Kramer moment, but I can draw the support points. Token metrics can help you draw the support points. Token metrics can help you draw the support points and we're going to have your language coming very soon. All right. This is the summary of the summary of the summary. This video is going to have to live for maybe one day, which is an eternity in crypto. Tax law selling is real. People are going to puke positions, whether that's CZ liquidating FTX or Alameda getting liquidated as a part of the sale. Who knows? Force selling is occurring. When force selling occurs, it's usually very violent. And when it stops, the market just levitates straight up. So right now, the market's in force selling mode. And when force selling ends, you'll know. Wouldn't it be funny if force selling ended right as the credibility of the United States came into play and Satoshi's vision came to reality? That is how markets work. Like the perfect trade, the thing you always wanted is available if you're willing to stick your hand into the fire and grab it. That's the market update, folks. Subscribe to this channel. We will see you soon.